think I hate you most of all. I mean, really, even more than David and Alex, if you can honestly believe that. And I want you to know something. I want you to know that I know you tricked Tony into marrying you, but you see, he never loved you. Not ever. But who cares about love? Who cares about marriage anyway? Who cares about anything but survival? Because I want you all to know I have, I have survived. Renee DeMera has survived. And none of you, I mean none of you, are ever going to hurt me again. And I am going to see to that, and I am going to show all of you, I mean it. Don't you touch me! Get out of my house! Just get out of Days was gone for a few weeks, but just like me with reviews, so was I. Due to Carvalotti's amazing writing, we get to see the reincarnation of a past character. Because when you're the daughter of the Phoenix, you get to rise from the ashes too. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my Days of Our Lives Week in Review, The Return of Renee Dumond. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Soap Sanctuary. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm DC, and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary, where all soap lovers are welcome. Like I said before, guys, when you are the daughter of the Phoenix, you too can rise from the ashes. This is our Days of Lives review, the return of Renee Dumond. Let me just first touch on this for a second on Carvalotti's amazing and stellar writing. Reincarnating a character without even having to bring it back. Because obviously the portrayer who portrayed Renee Dumont, Felice Sampler, if I'm saying her name correctly, she's unfortunately passed on. But I love how, okay, so let's, 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 let's break this down for a second. We've got Stefano, right? We've got Stefano. Stefano was the Phoenix. He's known to reincarnate himself every single time. Even though Joseph Moscalo is no longer with us here in the physical realm, we, they've still found ways to reincarnate his character. When they did Stefano through Steve, or Stephen O, Stephen O. Even when they did Stefan O, Demera, to me that was Stefano being reincarnated again. That was another That was another form of Stefano reincarnation. And Days, I think that's been like the running gag. I don't say running gag, but that's just like been the thing with Stefano. He reincarnates himself any way, always possible. There was a chip, all this stuff going on. And... I love, and this is the thing I want to talk about too when it comes to Carvalotti. Soaps, I have to realize, you have years and decades worth of history and writing. The writing should never be lazy. So you have decades worth of history to work with. And so you don't need to pull something out of your Baudelaire to write a good storyline. You have good storyline right there. And so this Sarah thing, this reincarnation of Renee Dumont, which I understand is only in Sarah's mind. And we will be a family once again. I need you, Stefano. I need you. Father. All that matters are the ties of blood and family. I am your family, and you are mine. Your loving son. good homage to history it gives Tony and Anna a chance to finally do something because they haven't done nothing in a while the last time I see Tony and Anna do something was back in, I think 08 when um, they found Tony on the island and they were coming off of the, 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 the mayor's secrets or whatever whatever and stuff like that which um, you know that's when they I think back in 2016 then afterwards they retconned it where John was no longer Demera which was the laziest shittiest writing I have to say that I've ever seen on soaps because that whole John's identity thing was something that was going on for the whole duration of the show. And it was nice that they finally put an end to it with him being Stefano's brother, which it made sense just to retcon. I don't know who John is at this point. I don't think I even care anymore. But to me, to bring Megan, to, I'm sorry, to bring Renee Dumont back, like 
in this form is great. I liked it because it's a good homage to history, you know? And I was familiar with the story of Renee and Tony where she fell in love, but then she found out she was Stefano's daughter. And then it wasn't until Daphne Demera told Tony on her deathbed that he wasn't really a Demera. And that's what allowed them to be, get, be together. But I felt like they could recon things and make it that she wasn't Stefano's biological daughter, so Tony could be the bio son since Tony is still around. And the Lee Sampler is obviously not going to be able to reprise the role, but I, I don't know. Maybe they don't want to touch that history because it, it's just part of it. So I, I can understand that too. Um, Stefano and his 8,000 kids. You know, I talked about this on the GH review, studying his 8,000 8, kids as well. You've got, okay, let, let's see if we can count all of the Demers kids, all of them in total. Adopted and biological. Okay, I made a list. Let me see if I got everybody down. If I miss anybody, please let me know. We're not counting children that weren't born or officially integrated or whatever you want to call it. Some of the ones that were characters and were cast in roles, okay? So I'm going to see if I got this all correctly, okay? We've got Renee. We've got Megan, Lexi, Kristen, Tony, Andre, Peter. Benji, oh my sweet dear Benji, Jake, Stefan, O, Chad, and EJ. And I believe that's all the Demer children. I believe that's all of them. I believe that's all of them. And you know, here's the thing too that made me knew something was going to happen because when EJ was in jail with, with Bell, he said, we never stab ourselves in the back Demeras with the exception of Renee and Benji. Benji's name was never mentioned for a longest time. And you know what characters' names are being mentioned like that? Something is about to go down. Something is about to go down. Cause I'm like, why would they mention their names? Those are like the two Demeras everyone's like forgotten about. And their names are just mentioned. I was like, something's about to go down here. The last time we saw Benji was he gave Steve a tarot card a, a, that possessed him by the devil. And he gave Steve a kiss on the cheek and Steve was possessed and that was that. I don't know if there's any news. Okay, go ahead. You gonna come with me? No, I'm gonna hang here. You, you go on. Okay. Benji, what the hell are you doing here, man? You forgot something? What? Something you need to give me? Wait, well, you came all the way down here. It must be something important. Well, hey, wait. What are you doing, man? So Steve was actually the next person after Marlena to get possessed. It wasn't Johnny. So Johnny's technically number numeral three to get possessed by the devil on days. A little fun fact. <laughs> but a lot of people don't know this about Benji Hawk was Benji was raised by uh, Steve and Kayla as a child and he was deaf. And they raised him as their son and to keep him safe from Stefano. And Stefano killed his mother. Stefano was brutal, man. And Benji came back. I think it was blackmailed by Tony or Andre, and they said, you have to give Steve that tarot card. He has to be possessed. And he tried to out Stefano or something like that, and then they killed him in the end. Pretty jacked up. That's like they just got rid of his ass. Just like when Stefano tried to kill Lexi. Stefano don't give a damn about his kids. He don't give a damn about him. You know what I mean? You know, this man does not give a damn about him. Next I want to move on to is Craig and Nancy. Let me tell you guys something, because I haven't done a review in almost a month nowadays. I didn't expect that coming, that Craig was going to be gay. I was thinking that what was going to happen was that the woman that was the, the woman that was on the phone that he was having an affair with was like an ISA agent. He was on some secret ISA mission. I was expecting something like that to be the case, and that was not. Um, this is something different for days to do. It's very different. Now, obviously, if Craig was sitting with another woman, I doubt Chloe would be so gung-ho and wanting to meet her. Um, but I like it. She just kind of has to accept that this is, this is her dad's truth. And it does bring a question. If you were in a relationship like that, could you really accept it? You know, I remember I used to talk to my mom all the time, and she always used to say, like, Chris, and before Caitlin was Caitlin, when Caitlin was Bruce, identified as Bruce, that they could work out anything if they put their heads together to it. If there's no cheating, no abuse of such a go on, they can work it out. And my mom would always say that. But then once Bruce transitioned and now as Caitlyn Jenner, my mom used to always say, I don't think so they can work things out. I don't think so. My mom has a Haitian accent. She goes, I don't think so things are gonna be worked out. I don't think so now, I don't think so. This Chris Jenner is not a lesbian. She's, she's not a woman. So how's that gonna work? And that, that that's, that's an interesting question. Um, 
So it, it, I was putting myself in Nancy's shoes this whole time of the storyline, like how that must be the man that you spent the rest of your life with, you know that he's gay. And it's not like he had an affair with another woman, he had an affair with a man, he's not into you. That, I'm sure, it's gotta be a lot to swallow. It's gotta be a lot to swallow. And I love the point of views that we're getting from this. They just threw this storyline in there. I like that Chloe and Brady get to be a part of the storyline. It's, it's just different for days. Um, the scene with Craig and Johnny, I was just like, okay. I could look online and say, how old is the actor plays Johnny? He's like 19, he's actually 28. Go figure. But that was Joe Devil tempting Craig, right? It wasn't it was, it was Johnny DeMera. But it's something different for days. Um, I like it when soaps do storylines like this. See, this is the thing with days. Days has so many different storylines going on. And not that it's all over the place, but it's like everything is different. No one two storyline feels the same. We've got Joe Devil trying to go over here with Gabby and Jake. We've got TR Coates. I'm going to get to that in a minute. We've got the affair with Allie cheating on her boyfriend with her business partner who was a woman. It's, it, it's, it's very diverse. Even the storytelling days is diverse. Days is diverse even in the storytelling. Let's just, let's just love that. Which brings me to Ava, Nicole, and Rafe. Allie better watch her back. Because once Ava knows that you, you messed around her son, and especially what she's going through right now with Rafe, I could see her, you know, killing Allie. I, I, I could see it happening. When she said, I swear on my son. She really didn't give a damn about Charlie. Damn. That's harsh. But she liked Trip so much because he, he was the son she had with Patch. Mm. I don't know why I always feel bad for the villains on this show, guys. I, I just don't know why. A Ava just needs to get with Xander or Jake at this point. Um, Rafe is too much of a goody two-shoes. Rafe has always been the groom's man, but never the groom. I, I think with the exception of Sammy Brady. But I, I don't know what Rafe is just... They don't write for him well. I'm surprised that Rafe has been on the show for 10 years. They haven't even given this man a child yet. Nothing. They've given Daniel Jonas one. Daniel Jonas is not even on no more. But where, where is Rafe's child? We need something to solidify him to the canvas because I almost feel like if Rafe were to leave the canvas tomorrow, I just wouldn't notice. I, I wouldn't notice. And Gabby's holding her own as a character that she doesn't even need that familial tie anymore. But Rafe, I, I don't know, just, I don't know. I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. Next on the list is T.R. Coates. I'm waiting for the history rewrite that they're gonna do to make, because T.R. was seen as, as, according to Paulina, this very abusive guy. I'm waiting for the history rewrite that says he's not. Because that's the only way that's gonna make us wanna root for him, for him to know Lonnie. Kudos to Dave for not dragging this storyline out as to who Lonnie's father was. And I think another reason why they're doing this is because Jack K. Harry, who plays Pauline Price, I think the writer is the days known. We don't know how long we've got this woman for. We don't know. So we need to utilize her for every moment we got left. Now, if it was somebody else or another character that's been on the show for years and decades, I think they would have dragged this out. And I honestly think they would have dragged this out. But I think now because the character Paulina is also on this this climax, is high, like it's, she you know, she's what's popping right now in days. They need to keep this momentum going with her character, not let it flatline. And like I said, they don't know how long they've got Jack K. Harry for. Because Jack K. could literally be starred in a movie or something else or something, another project comes up and she's out the door. So they're trying to utilize her the best they can. Which honestly, if you think about it, that's kind of what they should be doing with all their characters. Chris and Alfonso, anyone? Which now I want to get to Joe Devil and Gabby. Why did Joe Devil and Gabby have a child? Because, like I said, Gabby, I didn't... Guys, I feel it in my heart of hearts. Gabby is going to have her Demera child. I'm telling you, I feel it in my heart of hearts. She's going to have her Demera child. She's already got her Horton Kiriakis child with Sonny and Will. She needs her Demera child. That's what's going to make her the next Sammy Brady. She literally has Sammy Brady written all over her, honestly. And with her and, 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 and Abby, and I said this before, they've definitely given me Dorian Lord and Vicky, Dorian Lord and Victoria, Vicky Lord vibes. You know what I'm saying? They definitely give you those kind of vibes. But I definitely see Gabby at some point in time, like getting her Demare child. Whether it's, I think what's gonna happen is she's gonna get pregnant and she's not gonna know if it's through Jake or through Johnny. Tell me I don't see that happening. Which if she has a child with Johnny, it means she's having the devil's child. It's very passions. I like it, right? Yeah, it's very passions, very passions. I like it, right? Very passions. It's very, very passions. I do believe the show is moving in that direction. I, I really do. And I want to talk really quick before I forget this Clyde West and EJ thing. I love how they redid the scene. 
And I know why they did that. When they when they when they when they know an actor is just like not coming back to role because James Scott has quit Hollywood at this point, and now with Dan, I don't even have to say his name for regal. Let's just call him Dan. Dan F. Okay, Dan F. We're gonna call him Dan F. For the sake of this, right? With him being in the role, they like okay, let's. I, I, you know, they do that on purpose sometimes. So now that like that can establish a storyline with everything. Clyde Weston did shoot EJ, and I'm I'm glad they're finally addressing that because that's the thing that made EJ go into hiding. That was the whole part of that. It was weird though because that they made EJ afraid of Clyde Weston. You're a Demera for crying out loud. Y'all can like do all this corruption stuff. You own the DA's office, but you were scared of Clyde Weston. I just, I didn't get it. I, I didn't get it. He was so scared of Clyde Weston at that time. It was, we one thing that Clyde Weston did a sneak attack, but I don't know. It just, the writing was off the wall for a little bit at that time. That's why we have Carvalotti now. That was why I have Carvalotti now. See, Carvalotti, Carvalotti, this is the thing about this writing. I'm going to say this time and time again. This man knows how to respect the writing history on the show without always having to retcon everything. You know what I mean? This man knows how to do that. Other soaps, they just don't know how to do that without having to retcon everything and their mama. Um, Young and the Restless, every time they do the storyline, every time they, they visit history, something has to get retconned in Young and the Restless. And let's not forget the Reliquary. Whew, that was a terrible storyline in Young and the Restless. That Goujon Reliquary crap back in 06, 07, 08. That, was, that storyline was a hot-ass mess. That was a hot... It got to the point where I don't think we even care who was behind the Reliquary, who killed Karma Mesta, who killed Jimin Kim. I think the rest of this. Another thing I wanted to kind of point out really quick before I forget on this broadcast, Craig's storyline, we're going to see an older gay man in storyline. And we're noticing the same thing on GH where Alexis and Harmony, I'm telling you right now, they're going to be in a relationship. That's not a spoiler. That's just what I believe. My soap senses are tingling. Just like when I knew Morgan and Ava, uh, Jerome were going to be a couple on GH. And I was telling my friends at the time, like, ah, you know, you're crazy. You're crazy. I don't see that happening. But my soap senses were tingling. They were tingling. It's kind of like on As The World Turns, how I knew Luke was gay before he even said anything. I was like, oh yeah, his character is going to be gay. I can just feel it. I was like, no, you think so? You think so? <laughs> and that's what happened. <laughs> Same like with Chad on Passions. I don't know how I knew he was going to be gay too, but I, I just, my, my soap senses were tingling. They were a little off of Craig though. I didn't see that coming because it just, I wasn't familiar with the character of Craig too. Maybe if I knew, I could have seen some things coming, but you know. But one thing I noticed on soap is that you'll see one storyline on a soap that's like off the wall or different, and another soap is doing almost the same thing. That's all you, I kind of feel like in Hollywood, people must be talking and like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try to beat them to the punch. If you noticed on Young and the Restless when they did the Alzheimer's storyline with Dina Mergeron, and then they had the Alzheimer's storyline on GH with Mike Corinthos at the same time, and these storylines also ended around the same time, too. Is that a coincidence? I mean, is it, is it really a coincidence? I mean, honestly, is it, is it, is it a coincidence? Because I just, I don't, I, I, I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know if that was really a coincidence, you know? When Sonny and Will were getting developed as a couple, it's just, it's just, it's just been things I've been noticing on the soaps, and I have to address them. It's things that I just notice that I have to address. Um, and we also know that the person who owns YNR also owns Days, which is a conflict of interest. I like to mention it all the time. Uh, I don't know how they stay at number one. I, I just don't know how. I, I don't know how, how YNR is at number one. Honestly, if you ask me, GH should be number one, Day should be number two, B and B number three, and then YNR number four. Some, something's going on in Hollywood. Some, something's going on over there in Hollywood. And the YNR, people in YNR, they get some good salaries. They get some good, some good old salaries. I tell you what, I tell you what. I was looking up the net worth of the soap actors of the day. Not to put control or anything, but I was just honestly curious. How much do they get paid for this? And um, something surprised me. Some things really uh, surprised me, surprised me. Some things really surprised me. Tells me what's going on in the soap land. You know, to understand the soaps, I feel like you do have to understand the business. Um, and if any of you guys never, if, if any of you guys did not see the story of soaps when they did that special during the quarantine, when the, well, when quarantine first, the, the, the inaugural quarantine is like to call it, watch that. Because it, it, it definitely sheds a lot of light. I definitely felt like Andy Cohen hosting that was not right. Um, and then him saying that primetime shows are better. It just made everyone want to slap the crap out of him. But it shed a lot of light in what's happening with sofas today and why some things went down. If you notice, and, and I should have covered this on the GH review, but 
General Hospital has a very cinematography. Cinema, the cinematography in General Hospital is very like movie-esque, if you notice. And I think that Valentini's understand like we gotta move in this direction a little bit. If you notice, soaps don't even look like how they used to look. There's certain times, I don't know if you notice it when you watch the soaps where it'll have that, cause soaps were filmed live back in the day. That's why they look the way they look. And of course, if they're producing this five days a week, all these days during the year, it's cheaper to do it that way than the way they initially had it. So if you notice that there's certain times you watch a soap, it won't look as live anymore. It'll look almost like the cinematography changes for like a split second or two. And I don't know if that's just the writers experimenting with certain things because when they're going digital stuff, because when I watch Days on Peacock as opposed to when I watch it live on NBC, it looks completely different from both. It looks completely different. Same when I watch Young and the Restless after it's posted on CBS.com and when it's in live, it looks completely different. Like it looks more HD and live and close up when you watch it live. I mean live like when it airs on its time slot on ABC or on NBC or CBS. Then as opposed to you watch it later on the day when they post it to their respective platforms. So that's just something I've noticed with that, honestly. That's something I noticed with that. But guys, before I kind of finish off with this review, what are your guys' thoughts on these storylines? What do you guys think about the Rene Dumond storyline? And see, what I liked about it is that a lot of times on GH, they'll bring back a character like Jennifer Smith, but they won't give us a backstory, a true backstory as to who she is. But see, that's what I say about Carvalotti. He knows how to respect history. He knows how to respect, because some people don't probably don't even know who Rene Dumont was. If you, if you just started watching the show in the past six or seven years, and this is a character all the way back from the 80s, we need context. So what are you guys' thoughts on this Rene Dumont storyline with Sarah believing, thinking that she's Rene Dumont? What do you guys feel about that? How do you feel about Joe Devil and Gabby? What are your thoughts also on the Craig and Nancy storyline? How, how are your thoughts about that? How do you feel? I feel kind of bad for Nancy, though, low-key. Like, I understand Craig has to live in his truth, but I, I feel kind of bad for Nancy. It's like, damn, like, I can only imagine that's like you spent your whole life with someone just to find out they weren't even really into you like that. That, that hurts. That, that hurts. That's, uh, that's a little bit scarring. That, that's, that's kind of, that, that kind of hurts. But what are you guys' thoughts on these storylines? Um, what about you? What do you guys think about T.R. Coates? Because I feel like there's a bigger agenda with that man, that storyline. By the way, he used to play Daniel Fry. Uh, was it Daniel? Chief Fry. He used to play Chief Fry on All My Children. Just a little bit of a fun fact. What are you guys' thoughts on that storyline? Talk to me about this. And what do you guys think about the Joe Devil storyline? Do you want it to end or are you here for it? Because I guess this is how they're tying in Ben and Sierra into the storyline. Um, I like Ben and Sierra, but I don't, I don't know if I... I don't know. But anyway, that's my digital Elijah review, the return of Renee Dumont, guys. I should have covered Gwen, but it just Gwen was really annoying me this week. There was nothing to cover with her. Same old, same old with Gwen. She's gonna get killed out real fast. Gemma Hawk's way. Her character to me is just Jack is her only ally, and that's not a strong enough ally for me, if you ask me in Salem. So I don't know what to really say about all that. Um but anyways, guys, that's my Days of Lives review, the return of Renee Dumont. Let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments. I'm happy to be back, guys. I'm going to try to do more of these videos. But like I said, my real life comes before my YouTube life. And I have to respect it at all times. But I am happy to come back and do these reviews. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm out.